it's uh, the very last speaker. Please, 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 shut the door, they're leaving, they're escaping, no. Okay, first I'd like to give thanks to the organisers for inviting me to this international conference. I thank to thank them for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. <clears throat> now, this group is about maximum utilisation of organic matter. And my perspective is that of the recycler. So how do we sort, um, are we making the best possible use of materials that we recycle? So I'd like to very briefly introduce our company, our group. And I will also talk about um, the general situation in the Canary Islands. And then I will talk to you about sorting and how sorting has allowed um, recycling to evolve in the Canary Islands and the repercussions of this for Spain in general. So, Martinez Cano Group, we've been working in waste recovery and recycling for the last 50 years. So I think you could say that we are old hands. Mm -hmm. We've worked in all the islands and we have invested 67 million euros in our facilities since 2005 both improving the plants and improving various different uh, areas of research and development so that we can improve our recycling facilities here in the Canary Islands. Mm, so, next area, recovery. We work with various different types of waste streams. We work with paper, cardboard, plastic, mm, non-use materials, e e w -E -E, and hazardous uh, waste as well. We manage about 140,000 tonnes every year. Recycling now. We recycle PET, plastic bottles, polyethylene, high-density, high uh, high and low-density uh, uh, PE as well, film. And we recycle virtually all materials that are thrown into the yellow bins in the Canary Islands. We also work with uh, non-use tyres, uh, old tyres. We uh, sort these uh, and then we put them through the processing pro uh, the, the first stage of the processing uh, process. The Martinez Cano Group um, has been working in sorting since we began. We do this in 52 different councils. So therefore, we supply our services to 1,156,000 Canary Islanders. This represents 60% of the island population. We classify 90% of the paper and cardboard and we cycle all plastic from the yellow bins. We also have complementary sorting services. We work alongside the hotel and and commercial sectors, Horeca. We follow the same process as we do with other sorting processes and we also have proprietary recycling plants. We have a 75% recycling ratio at present, which is pretty good going. And about 60 to 65% is being re recycled here in the Canary Islands. So how do we sort in the Canary Islands? Well, in broad brush strokes, Mm, sorting in the Canary Islands compared to sorting the rest of Spain. Now, I think there are two areas, quality and quantity. If we look at quality first of all, mm, perhaps there is a lower percentage of uh, mm, mm, foreign elements in, in recycling here in Canary Islands compared to the national average. So that's with regards to quality, perhaps slightly better quality, but although, uh, as we've heard already, we really do need to improve. Um, uh, uh, we also need to improve quantity because we have, at the moment in Canary Islands, about eight kilos per person compared to national average is about 12 per person. 16% uh, of this is foreign compared to the national average is 30%. And mm, growth per um, capita is growing immensely, and we hope that both in Canary Islands and in Spain we will be able to catch up with the rest of Europe. Mm. 
Now in Canary Islands also if we look at the uh, containerization ratio, I think that we're slightly lower than the rest of Spain. Uh, 11.7 Canary Islands per capita, national is 12.7, so perhaps only slightly uh, below the national average in containerization ratio. So we have sorting and recycling. It's a very old process, but there are new laws that have been put in place and perhaps there has been a slight revolution here. Mm. And the concept has varied and this is mm, now revaluing the way that we recycle. Now, every recycling process has two main phases. First of all, we have triage and classification and then we have the mechanical part of the recycling. For example, the PET recycling, uh, which is what we see in the yellow containers. Uh, but both of these processes are part of the uh, remit of the recycler. And the recycler has to be involved in the triage process and in the selective classification process. So this is a continual process, is a process that we see in the manufacturing, the beginning with the, the, the processing, the creation of materials and then recycling at the end of the day. Um, obviously, in the past we've had problems in this process, but recyclers have learnt their trade slowly but surely and they've got better at what they do and now recyclers should be able to determine exactly why the type of uh, mixture is sent to them and what they should do with this. So perhaps this situation has improved. So what uh, are recyclers doing now in this classification process? Well, in the past, recyclers, in Spain particularly, mm, looked at the entire volume, but they only recycled a small part, and this created a kind of shady uh, under, uh, underground market where there was no official classification and these recyclers could therefore not commit to economies of scale whereby they could begin to invest in technologies and improve quality. So mm, nationally um, in Spain we, began, we were importing recyclable materials rather than actually dealing with them properly and then in the 1980s we introduced integrated management systems and from this moment onwards, we began to scale up the amount that we recycled. So this means that recycling materials became a commodity in certain terms because of the new management and select, uh, classification processes. And because it's a commodity, this meant that the prices started to uh, also increase. And from this moment, Onwards, recyclers began to invest in uh, economies of scale, and this made them more efficient in recycling processes. So this means that um, import figures have gone down. The import figures are about 5%, and they were about 90% in the past. This means that we um, don't need to import uh, recycled raw materials. So this means that we have boosted efficiency in the way that we recycle and produce raw materials. Therefore, national recycling is now a key plank of our raw materials uh, industry. So we started sorting um, in about 2000 here in the Canary Islands. And since then, there has been an exponential growth in the quality of what we now recycle. Mm, we also need to look at the various different waste streams because the, we recycled stuff that was not sorted, but the lion's share of what we do actually recycle now has been already sorted. So that process is now firmly in place. Okay, yeah, I understand. I'm running out of time. I'll be as brief as I possibly can. Okay, let's make haste, not speed. Now, in the Canary Islands, the Mm, mm, we are producing raw materials from what we're recycling. In fact, we are now ahead of the rest of the field here in the Canary Islands. So uh, in the Canary Islands, we are recycling PET, and then we have uh, polyurethane, PEAD, from s the sorting process. Mm, people ask, how well are we doing? 
Well, if you look at PET, we have installed capacity of 13,000 tonnes, but the uh, volume produced through sorting is about 9,000 tonnes. And if we look at PAEEAD, polyurethane, our uh, installed capacity is at about 8,000 tonnes, but the sorting volume is about 3,000 tonnes. This means that we pr are prepared to expand. Uh, and in fact, from last year to this, we can see that we are already expanding in this field, so we will be able to boost this area. And so, um, in a nutshell, sorting in the Canary Islands, we are extremely efficient. Sorting is cheap. Uh, we have an optimal cost for recycling, only one euro per ton of recycled materials. And what's more, it's not only efficient, but it's effective too. Because the recyclers are now prepared to receive the recycling mix. And in fact, we are now recycling 90% of all waste material in the Canary Islands. So what does this mean? All sorted plastic collected in the Canary Islands is recycled in the Canary Islands. All of it. What's more, we have the manufacturing capacity for current levels of recycling and to grow into the future in Canary Islands. So, and finally, Canary Islands recycling is extremely high quality because the recyclers are prepared for it. I will um, uh, not delve into the next subject matter much more because we've already heard a great deal about it. What do we need to do? Well, we need to also boost citizen participation. Obviously, um, we need to deal with these problems because we know, and we know, everybody knows that sorting is important, so therefore we need to incorporate it into our daily lives. We also need to improve containerization ratios and we also need to encourage awareness growth mm. because people need to understand that there's a yellow container there it's there for you to be able to recycle and therefore we are perhaps contrib contributing to the process by educating people and making people know that they need to recycle um, I'm, a I'm an optimist and I think that in recovery and recycling sector there is going to be a boom in this sector and I think that after 10 years of, um, of, of, of um, whipping the people into shape and trying to tell them what to do, I think that at the end of the day, they will start to understand. Our kids are growing up, and they have grown up with this uh, awareness message. And I think that they have grown up with a, an awareness of the fact that this recycling culture is um, the way of the future. I think they are recycling natives uh, and therefore it's something that they mm, know and understand much better than, than we do in the older generations. So I think that we are going to have a generational uh, shift and young people will recycle a lot into the future. So that's basically my message. Thank you very much.